Welcome to class two, uh, Indian Ink. Now we're doing a lovely portrait of a little girl dressed up in a kind of Dutch manner. Um, instead of using colours today, I'm just going to use one colour, which is sepia. If you haven't got sepia, then burnt umber will do. You know, you can see me. Uh, a burnt umber, or even burnt sienna, if you want. Or whatever colour you want, but I'm just going to use one colour and uh, over the ink. So we're using uh, waterproof ink again, naturally. So when it dries, uh, we can glaze over. Uh, we need tissue, water, naturally, uh, Indian ink, which is the spider one, uh, which is waterproof, Windsor Newton. Uh, acrylic inks, waterproof as well. Got a bit of goulash. I'm going to use some wax, especially for very thin and white areas in the garment and the eyes. Might be a bit on the nose as well. Uh, I need my glasses. Um, I'm going to see what we can do with this nice one. The last, I've done a few like this, but that's an old man actually. But uh, uh, I've got some nice portraits of younger people as well, skin tones, and I can't find them at the moment. Everything's getting mixed up in this room. I have to have a big sort out and a big clean up. I need an exhibition, get rid of some stuff. Anyway, that's in the future. So, we can have a drink. Hmm. Ready to start. And um, we're going to sketch it out. I've put an advert, I put a notice on, just to tell you, uh, the Lawrence Group which we didn't have this morning because the church has closed down and the halls closed down as well because of uh, rot or damp rot or whatever it is um, and it's going to be a big job so we've had to find new premises and from next Tuesday if you're a member of Lawrence we're at uh, St Nathaniel's which is just up the road at Platte Bridge um, it's a nice hall very similar to St Mary's, uh, but it's inside the church, but it will be warm, I've been told uh, that I, they'll guarantee it's going to be warm, it's got radiators around the room, and uh, we should be okay there, so we'll go and see what it's like for the next few weeks or whatever, and if we like it we'll stay, indefinitely, um, it's the same price as St Mary's, so that's good, and um, very nice lady who owns it, Arlene. So uh, we can't get on with the, the uh, management. Okay, so that's from next Tuesday at uh, St Nathaniel's. If you um, if you remember, and it was only Ina, actually who comes to uh, Tuesday class. If you know anybody, let them know. Um, other than that, Greenmates carrying on as normal doing quite well, got some new members and um, on a Monday uh, I'm still not starting my Friday one I'm going to contact them actually and uh, we're trying to start some more classes the one at St Thomas's a uh, small watercolour class I can only keep it to 12 people because the room's not big enough but uh, uh, we're going tomorrow and we're going to see what it's like for the next four weeks actually just to um, if it works okay, I will stay. Anyway, we'll have to. Everything's changing. Change is good. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. So without further ado, I know the little girl's got a knife in her hand. She's peeling potatoes. Actually, you know, she's not threatening you. So <laughs> it's a lovely. She's got a lovely face. Uh, it's a lovely picture, actually. I have done it before in uh, pastel. Not this version. I took. I've, I've spun it round. So I've done the opposite view. In a pastel, and um, which turned out quite nice. But uh, we'll see what I can do in Indian ink because I like I like the tone of colours. Again, we don't want to go as dark as this. Okay, so because the head the head is in the middle of the picture, and it's about a third of the way down the picture, but we need to keep that uh, third area. One, two, three. Can you see something like that? So you don't have to get everything on. We can go up to the arm, so you don't have to be, you know, too um, 
So we just need to draw this egg again. So we start with an egg. And it's much easier to do it this way, honest. Make sure you've got room at the top for the top of the egg because a heart or a bonnet is going to go over the egg and take part of the space up at the back. So that's the reason, because it forms the shape. It's like the old policeman joke. Does your head go to the top of that helmet? Anyway, it does. Not in the policeman, but it does with this little girl. So that's the egg, and that's upright. It's nice. It's left, uh, north to south, okay, because the head's upright, and the eyes are always in the middle again. So we put the lines in first, like that. Then we look at the position of her head. Okay, so I'm going to do it in pen this as well. Um, the position of her head, if you drew a line, it's probably going to go a straight line would be in the middle of this eye, uh, but uh, not necessarily, we'll just see how it goes. And the eyes are level, you could draw a line more or less straight through both eyes. Might be slightly, but we keep them level. And then um, a, a view, if we turn the egg that way, to the left, to her right, sorry, her left, then we get a three quarter view, which is something like that. So that's what we, that line becomes a curve and then where they meet is the centre of the features at the centre of the eyes so we put a socket in here which is going around the corner and then we put a socket in here which is near enough centre like we've got on the picture okay so that's quite good and we put the pupils in the middle because she's looking forward uh, but then we've got perspective slightly to the right, like that. Uh, the same here, lovely dark eyes, yeah, like that. And then we just draw the top eyelid and make sure you get that half moon shape, which is something like that. You've got a lovely curve to the eye. Okay, uh, we don't actually need to we draw a little bit of where it meets the tear duct, things like that, and that is where the nose is going to be in a minute and the eyebrow sits here okay same eyes both eyes like that so the eyebrow sits on that socket so if you put the pupils in like that and then we're going to add some bit of wax when we rub out so while we do it in pen then we can rub it out so that's that lovely curve of her eye uh, we look at the nose we drop a line down from her, her iris there and that's where the tip of her nose is going to be. And if you actually measure the distance, say the socket, it is half a socket. So if you put that there, it's half a socket. So it's about here. Okay. So the tip of the nose comes to there. And we look at Rembrandt's triangle again. So the tip of the nose is here. Then we go underneath. You can see? So we get that wedge shape like that and that's what we need to find to get the philtrum because she's got quite a large philtrum there and that's where we put the nostrils okay and this then is the shape of her, the top of her eye we've got the thickness of the eyelid as well on both of them and you see nice and dark and then we curve that and this comes in from an angle now I know it's only a little bit darker that because it's um, the top of the nose then we've got Rembrandt's triangle which is this shape here okay it's the shape there so the distance between the cheekbone and the nose and that comes down and that gives you the shape then of a face which is something like that so because we get the filter in the center of the nose can you see and the nostril, which is shapes like that. Then we get this nostril here with a lovely shadow, which comes all the way from the, the top of the nose, or that section, which is that dark shape. Um, and the filter, you've got this huge shape, like that, which goes in that direction. So the middle of the mouth is the, we put the top lip in, we do the side muscle, which is very short, the and it disappears and then we do the side muscle here again if you drop a line down 
from a tear duct that is the width of the mouth so we keep it nice and small you see uh, and that then gives you the shape of the top lip which is at uh, the bottom lip which is a lovely little curve just like that okay so that goes in and then we've got the curve of a chin which is here you don't have to stick to your egg okay we use the egg for the eyes only so to get her looking very young we need her to be uh, small face everything in the features yeah and then the top of the head is going to go off the pic um, into the bonnet into the hat so we've got the forehead there it's that shape which actually casts a shadow okay we've got the shape of a chin and the shape of a neck which comes from about the corner of a mouth actually like right there drop a line down you drop lines down best way of doing it <laughs> to position things we can start to remove anything we don't want okay uh, and then I'm just going to draw the shape of the bonnet uh, so we've got this lovely angle it comes off and it goes into the mouth area and then it comes past here and it goes that way and that comes all the way down to the nice straight angle um, and that's this bit straight angle that comes in to a, a chin more or less and then it goes that way just under the chin yeah. and then we get this lovely curve which goes to the back of her neck and see so this gives you the shape and then we can just about see that comes up to the position of the nose here and then that joins up with this area so we've got a straight line shadow straight line there and then that joins up with that so I get a, a nice line like that which goes past the eye not far off the eye so it's a straight line like that. okay and then you get the shape of the bonnet and then we look at the top of the head which is um, coming from about here and then the shape of the top just to give us our, our uh, top, of, uh, top of the bonnet kind of thing like that okay so we get rid of all this you better do it when you've got rid of it when you put the pen on uh, so that's that lovely angle bit of a crease there a uh, bit of a crease here and then we've got this um, the shape of a neck coming down so we've got these lovely kind of folds in the neck uh, coming across and um, like I said that's the neck then we've got this shadow going that way and then we've got some lovely highlights on the uh, on the blouse just keeping things nice and simple um, again we're going this way keeping the highlights try and get these little folds can you see how they kind of turn like that so this is light this is dark this is dark yeah so you get these lovely folds um, and you can get the same thing happening the sides and the, the shapes and the light catching things like that. okay we've got a few here as well so we can come down to the yeah, if you want to put the hand on that's okay just put a little bit not much so you get this lovely shape and that's going off the picture <coughs> she's holding um, this um, potato and she got a knife in her other hand I might just leave that out because it's not too obvious actually especially at the bottom so we can keep it just the shape like that and um, we can do the back and the shoulder and it comes round and then that kind of lovely frill to here which gives these lovely pleats in the top of her arm okay the sleeve if you like and that joins up with that So I'm going to use a pen and then rub the pencil out. 
Okay, use the pen af after you've done all your positioning. Keep the eyes the right distance, keep them big. Just have a drink. Um, stand back to see if everything's in the right place. We don't want any kind of creases in this one. This is a young girl, so we keep it very um, we don't have any creases or folds in the skin actually. So from my high from my eyebrow in the eye except the Rembrandt's triangle and then the pupil and the iris and the top eyelid is into the eye like that. It's quite dark. Okay, we can see the thickness of the eyebrow. This goes into the shadow of the nose. Again, we've got this lovely curve and then that pupil, iris, and then you go into your tear duct and there's a little line here. The bottom eyelid always gets overlapped by the top. You see how you come down like that. Nostril, nice big nostril there, you can block them in actually. And uh, the nose, keeping it very faint. You don't really want to have a line around it. And then as you're coming in, we're going into the filter. This is that U shape thing there. And the top lip. Beautiful kind of curve. Nice and dark in the corners. And then that disappears around the corner. So you just see the shadow under the lip. And then a little chin. Okay, so don't make the chin too small. Not too big. Little chin. Nice negative there. Between the back of her hat. Or the bonnet. side uh, here again straight line straight line and then a fold and then the crease the shadow from the bonnet going down into the forehead uh, okay then the neck keep the neck nice and small and then we've got this lovely light Catching these folds in the top. And probably all you need is that little bit. Not too much. Something like that. Uh, we can just about see that here. Uh, but it all disappears into a shadow in that area. It's going to use with the ink. Uh, this comes around here. Shadows. This is a bit darker. Put some wax on that as well and then it's just looking at some of the shapes of the folds in the fabric uh, look at and uh, this lovely big one here and that one so just kind of fold it uh, that was dark so you have to be aware that she has got um, a shoulder under there yeah and then you make the, um, the sleeve kind of fit fit the shoulder area <laughs> okay and a few creases not too many uh, a nice light dark bit bit of a bit of a thumb not too big made it too big before you can just see a nail Overlaps, straight line, overlaps, and it goes in. I'm just going to put this crease. I'll leave the rest. We're going to have quite a few drips. Yeah. I'll put the knife in, but I uh, don't need it. Okay, nice, simple drawing. Move out the lights. Move out the pencil, so because we don't want. Um, oh, I'll do the hat as well. Um, forgot to do the hat. 
There are a few creases up there. Crease up there, get rid of the pencil. Because we're using wax, that's all. Yeah. I don't want to smudge um, pencil into a big black stain, which is what will happen. Believe me, I've done it before. Once you get rid of the pencil, everything should be in the right place. Yeah. And then we just paint tonal values. Quite simple. Uh, just do a curve and then up there to the bonnet. Okay. Yeah. We've got a lovely shadow here, which I just want to very slightly put in. Because I'm not putting a line near the nose because we need that to be nice and dark. But um, I need it to blend into the nose, uh, keeping those lovely eyes. I'm not too bothered about the um, the lines here. It's a, a nice straight area, and then this falls. <coughs> like that, and uh, that'll do. We can draw things, draw things uh, with wax to give us triangles and angles that are light and dark. So I just draw with the wax mainly, just to give me a straight line. The main straight line is this from the hat coming down here. I want it to get a lovely line in, and then it disappears and it comes round again. Um, and we also need this one, just on the tops of the folds. You can draw the triangle shape, then this one. Um, like that. I've not done the shadow ever. And round it, and then uh, down the side, and down the sleeve. Keep that lovely light here. Uh, I've got a bit there as well. I don't need an underhand. Um, I need that shadow in. Just forgot that. So, so here we've got a shadow on the on the uh, of the blows. And then we've got the shape of the blows, which is something like that. Uh, I've got a bit of wax on there, so it doesn't matter. And uh, we'll keep this part, we're going to lift off some uh, tonal value to give us these uh, lovely little creases. I'm not bothered if it runs and bl drip, drips a bit. And that's what I'm uh, kind of looking for. Okay, nice shape here, nice distance from that eye and the shadows. So now we get some ink. Stand back. Have a look. Yep. Got some ink. And then we're going to paint it. Ah, so a bit more wax on some of the folds. At the top of the head. Just to keep that lovely highlight on the sharp edges. And we can put some at the top of this uh, fold in this bonnet. And one here, sorry. That goes off and one here that comes down there and disappears. Uh, this stops the paint running into the bonnet when I do the background because the background is darker. So that's the only reason I do that. So it stops the paint running. Okay. Uh, so I stand back. Yeah. As long as we're happy. <coughs> and uh, away we go. Hopefully. The wax away and get your ink. Give it a good shake. The light's coming from top right, and uh, so everything is in the shadow underneath and to the left, which is quite nice. I'll just put a bit there, so I keep seeing places folds. Stop. 
You know what we do it a bit. We get something, put it out. Might do some texture in the background, not doing any in the little girl's face. So I've got a bit of salt for later. And I've got my gouache and I've got my sepia. So we can start to paint. Um, mind you, I've just noticed something else, sorry. If you look at the features, I've not done the the highlight in the eye and it needs to be nice and big. That lovely highlight at the top. Okay. She's got a little spot on her nose, which is pure white as well. And she's also got a little corners of her eye, especially on that side. And then the underside of the eye, uh, got a bit on this side as well. The bottom eyelid, catching the light. The philtrum, yeah, uh, the corners of her mouth and the bottom lip. And then that's it. Some bit. So away we go and put some paint on, some ink. Get your tissue ready because you're going to have to dab off. You can leave white areas but I kind of try and go all over because if you look at some areas the forehead's not just white, it's got this blend of tone. So if we do the whole thing then lift off, it's, um, it makes it a little bit easier. So take your ink from your, um, your nice blob of uh, black and then add water to it so we get a lovely wash so I'm going to do this uh, and come down the picture actually I'm going to come all the way down the picture until we get to the bottom now uh, we have to work quite quick yeah we need, we need to work quick to kind of get this dark tone and then on the side of the face it needs to be dark side of her nose, uh, the hat and everything. And then we're going to lift off, lift the light out in places, yeah, and the forehead and whatever. Yeah. That gives you a softer tone as well. So we've got this lovely soft, this is all going to be in shadow, isn't it? Then we can paint around right there if you want. Um, and into the neck. Uh, we've got some lovely shadows here. If you get to the blouse, just try and make marks rather than cover everything because we do want to leave some white, yeah? And then we've got this lovely dark. Don't be that dark there. Just keep the dark in the corners and let it blend and run. Something like that. And then into the head. Like that. Into that eye and the corner of the eye, yeah? Like this. Uh, soften it. Soften that area. Use the side of your brush. You can lift off as well. Just keep it nice and soft uh, inside there and the ear, side of the mouth. Uh, then the chin, a little bit of there. Take off. Take off some light here. Just so when you get in these little shadowy bits. Uh, your brush as well and that will help you to lift lift tones off into the forehead okay and around the, the lips and whatever you so we've got a, a really good tonal value going on we can add this dark area like I said uh, this is okay this will work quite well Got a lovely shadow there. I'm just adding this kind of darker bit as it comes down into the bonnet. Because you got a lovely shadow on the face. And then as you get here, it's going darker again. So we'll go into the eye, uh, down there, keep it lovely and light. Soften the edges. We might be glazing this quite a bit, so don't worry. Take off some light up here. You can always use the goulash. Uh, the middle of the nose is a little bit darker. Shadows. 
I'm going to throw some salt in the background that's not dry. And that, a little bit splattering as well. A few shadows. You can use a smaller brush for detail. Anything kind of uh, inside uh, the area of the background and around that, uh, that shoulder is quite dark. Like that. Just let it blend. It's going to be nice and light. That's uh, just keeping this uh, slight shadow. Get your brush. Look at the nose now, underneath and the side. So we need it to be dry actually. So don't do it too quick, like I'm doing. Let that blend, we can glaze that. And under the neck, I'm just going to add this beautiful shadow here. Under the neck, which comes into the neck. And then disappears around the corner. Uh, so keep it slightly darker here. And then we've got that shadow there as well. It's still running quite a bit, so I'm, I need it to dry a little bit just to give me some softness. To the features um, again I'm going to do all this kind of light just like all the twist uh, and the shadowy bits uh, and cause dirt and that later can't I? so I need that to dry I've got some little accidents happening which are okay doesn't really matter. Little happy accidents. Why is my salt wet? It's quite sweat. <laughs> Get your brushes in the pot. Don't let them dry out. And keep them soft at the edges. Like that. <coughs> okay. Um a little bit of Tone again, so here we've got a nice shadowy bit, and there, and then I'll do that after. Try and lift off just to keep the light on it. When it dries, it will go lighter, so I need it to kind of change tone, and then I can glaze over. So get my hair dry. I won't hear my knife for a bit, so I'll just. Uh, Oops, got tangled up. <laughs> Yeah. As you can see, it's gone a lot, a lot lighter. Yeah. So it's given me what I was after that contrast. So. I'm just trying to keep my black pot away from anything else. So now I can use my middle sized brush because what I want to do is create these uh, these lovely sections that are changing tone. You see? Uh -huh. So I've got the shadows going up. Uh -huh. Then you blend them 
with a damp brush so I keep them soft edges you see and then this comes down again and goes that way so it, you're keeping those little changes in tone as you get here it goes a little bit darker this goes a bit lighter and this is going darker because it's darker than the background so just add more dark just to a point don't want it running so we want to keep it in that hat like that and then just add tone like that. let it run uh, let it drip it's negative space so we're looking at the shapes within that bonnet if you like just to give us those shadowy bits all right and then underneath we've got the same thing happening <coughs> just as you come from here into the forehead and the eye we've got this lovely shadow that comes into the back of her head as well and the shape between the background so here i'm going to keep um just get my tissue i'm going to keep that light at the front but i want to get it darker at the back here like that. and then i want to shadow the eye and the, underneath the eyebrow so this is the the cheek is going to be quite dark and then the bit in the middle is not it's going to be reflected light there so i want that to blend in around here like that. so we've got a lovely kind of light dark then light again you know what i mean into a cheek which is quite dark and then that goes under the mouth down the neck the, the chin and then under the chin and then it disappears keep your brush clean soften the edges like that. and we can glaze as many times as you like just take sharp edges off it's the main thing so you get the shadows without sharp edges all you have to keep remembering is like it's dry it's quick so we can put the shadows in like that. just by glazing so you get slightly darker tones take the blobs off slightly darker tones in the features and if it's dry at the top we can add other kind of tones like this It's um, coming this way and then it gets darker there, isn't it? Like that. This way it changes tone. Soften it. Uh, that's quite dark. You can do the same thing with the top of the hat because we've got these little dark shapes. So there's a dark shape there. Uh, there's one next to it like that. and then it goes lighter and then we get the edge you can see so we just paint these little shapes and we should end up with something similar to what you're looking at like that. little folds and creases uh, it doesn't matter if it's not as same darkness yet and then that changes into a dark tone there a light tone here you got things like that. <coughs> uh, this goes dark in the middle, and this goes dark at the edge, and then this goes dark in the middle. And some of my wax is working, some of it's in the wrong spot. Uh, that lovely crease there, because it's quite sharp, quite a sharp crease, you can see. It's like that. And then inside the, uh, the fold, that fold goes into her eye and it picks out around that triangle there. Like that. And then that goes into the fold here and blends rapidly. We can soften that as well to keep it simple. Yeah. And then we're going darker there, slightly darker there. And keep that mix, not too dark. A lot of it, like I, I say when we do these, we want it to be um, slightly dark, but not black. Yeah? 
So you just want to see the contrast between one cause. So top lip, nice and dark, corners of the mouth, nice and dark, bottom lip, light. So we have that kind of thing, soften the areas between, give you a nice soft mouth. Uh, you can just about see underneath the lip, it's a bit darker. There, like that. And then you've got that dark shape, another dark shape under the lip goes into the side of the mouth. So get that brush, keep it soft, blend it in. Like that. Side of the mouth. And then we get the same thing happening with the eyebrow. Add a bit of eyebrow inside the nose, like that. So you want to keep that lovely shadow inside the nose uh, coming down. Take it off, soften the edges. <coughs> because it's a little girl, you know, it's very difficult to keep lovely soft shapes, but uh, we're trying. We want it to be very, very soft. Keep your tissue handy. Not for crying, just for blending. So you soften the edges, you see? You just dab it on the edge to make it a soft edge. And it doesn't need to be jet black. Um, the eye is dark and the pupil. So we've got a lovely, um, that lovely dark shadow. And then we've got the, the shape of top eyelid. Uh -huh. This creates that shadow in her eye as well. A little bit underneath the bottom eyelid, not much. And then do the same over here. And because I put wax on, I should have a highlight like that, which is good. So again, make sure it's dry underneath. The eyelid, eyebrow, sorry, like this. Just slightly darker underneath the eye. Can you see the shadow? Like that. Take the, take the tone off again, a bit of tissue just to dampen it, and then do the shape of the top eyelid, uh -huh. and then the shape of the yeah, where the eyelid meets the uh, the eyeball because it's quite dark, uh, and that's what gives that lovely kind of contrast as well. Corners of the mouth are always dark. Then we've got the nose, this is the area where we want to kind of keep reflected light and as we're coming down we go this way and then that way but we blend this into the rest of the nose because we don't want it to be so, so dark and then that goes under the nose and see and then we get a lovely shadow there as well which we can use later. Uh, we can use a pen, leave a little bit Put the filter in, this is that little new shape thing, something like that, uh, a little bit darker under there, like that, and a bit darker up here. So this, it goes into the forehead, and then it goes lighter as it comes down, but then as it gets to the forehead, you're going darker, so you want to be really dark here, not really dark, not black, but uh, nice dark. Like that, put it in and then soften the edge with a damp brush so it blends a bit. See, get a nice soft edge to it, and then your tissue just to dampen the edges, which is quite nice. Mm, that's lovely. Um, when we look at shapes now within the shadows, you get other shapes because we've got like uh, a shadow here. I don't know what it is. But we'll put it in. We've also got this shadow down the side of her cheek, just under the chin. It goes that way. And then add water to soften the edges. And that will bring out the, um, the chin. But it'll also bring out that lovely highlight or reflected light on the features. 
it's just on the jawline. Okay. Uh, we need a little bit more just coming around the bottom of the neck and then we're going to the shadows over here. Uh, this is not very dark but uh, I'll soften that. Paint what you see. Yeah. Paint the shapes you see. Now you got the shadows from a blouse on the on a, a chest, it's like that. And then we've got these really nice, uh, nice areas where um, you've got these shapes of blows that soften away. You can do the blows in a bit. It's just little areas now that you need to concentrate on. Uh, we'll darken the eyes a little bit more. We want that lovely. So the, so the pupil disappears. Uh -huh. uh, but the, the highlights, the light shining in her eyes, is stronger. Stand back. Yeah, leave it. And then uh, have another drink. <laughs> Keep your different tissues. Yeah. And get to a bit where so in the I'm going to use my little round brush because I want to create some of these uh, lovely um, folds in the in the shapes in the, uh, the side of the head. This one I've just darkened this because the side of this where the uh, temple is is dark, and then as it comes down it goes light again, so it, that's just at the side of the ear there, can you see? So you're getting that shape. So the cheekbones are also quite dark, so you've got this straight edge like that. So, but we don't want to leave it like that, because she'll start looking old, so we soften it straight edge, so it blends. Like that. Okay. Nice soft edge to it. Again, yeah, use some tissue. Uh, there is a nice darker area of the cheek. Like that. And this uh, lovely dark on the nose again. Alright, and then, yeah, like I said before, I'm just going to use this to put in some of the shapes in the blouse. And then leave some white edges, if you like. Uh, we've got a, cur a cool, a nice curve here. I've, I've put some wax there, so the top of it's uh, light. I've also got this edge like this, and then it goes dark. But then it changes, it goes uh, kind of light here, and then dark. And we can blend that in a bit. Same principle. This is a lovely big dark area. Uh, and it goes into a fold, into a crease. Like that. Then inside the, these little marks I put in. Just to give us all these curves in the top. This is quite, quite a strong uh, shadow area here. It goes into the light, catching this uh, scene in the light. And uh, the same over here. So we've got something there. Uh, something there, soften it, <coughs> and we've got the folds in, the blows itself, it's a kind of, you've got lines and what have you, and then it goes darker down here. 
against her arm and it was darker inside the sea. Uh, it's quite dark under the arm. There. Um, but like I said, I'm not sure I'm going to do that now. I just want to indicate rather than uh, actually paint it. Disappear a bit. So we can have a bit of darker tone. Just picking out the light bit. Like that, let it blend. <coughs> Soften the creases. Um, Dark yeah, fall there. That was it. Oh my god. Where does time go? And then a bonnet. Lovely strong dark here. Again, soften the edge so it goes into the face slightly. And then we'll put a lovely piece of dark there, side of the forehead. Because that brings out the forehead. And it also brings out the uh, shape. Like I said, now remember that triangle. Soften the edges. Like that. Back of the neck. Under the ear and back of neck. Okay, not far off. Just a few more of these little changes, let that blend in a bit. Picking out some of these shapes and then blending it. Bonnet again, just a little bit darker. It's a nice out edge that. Add water. Nice out edge. Got a similar one there actually at the bottom. Uh, here. So it changes direction. Fingers, thumbs dark, back of the hand dark. You don't have to just like I said, I kind of mix that up so people don't see it. But, uh, nice dark. Uh, Play about, yeah. You can have a shape there that just picks out the back of her arm, or and then again, you start doing too much detail, it looks a bit silly. So, um, just leave it. Uh, there's a lovely negative there, which I'm going to pick out at the back of her, and down the side. This is the back vein shape. Blend it in. Yeah. Uh, doesn't have to be the same tone. You can just soften the areas. Let it run. Keep it dark at the top. Again, use the tissue. 
Well, that's darker than. Anyway, better glaze it. Taking too long. Hair dryer. Got the hair dryer on, and we're going to glaze it with some uh, sepia. Get your get your dirty pot away. Get your clean water. Keep your big brush clean, and then um, make a clean spot in your palette, and put some sepia out, which is this. Sepia is a lovely warm kind of. It looks like an old photograph when you do. Put a little bit. And we can use some for our darker tones as well. So. I used to tell people to mix the black with it, but uh, I tell it to you, you know, you can get right dark with, with the sepia. Make sure you put the top back on. I always have a problem with these uh, flat tops. And again, a bit of ink, get a bit, bit of sepia, sorry, and then mix that with plenty of water and work your way down the picture again. So. We're just glazed, glazing the whole thing again, yeah. Uh, because it's dry, so we can go all the way down. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Lots of water down. Go a little bit darker if you want. Just tear it to you. And, uh, and this ties the whole thing together. <coughs> because you've got your darks in, it doesn't matter. Oops. I've got a bit of too dark. Um, across the forehead. She goes lovely and sepia, right? And because it's waterproof, because it's watercolour, sorry, it's um I've got same again. <laughs> it's um it will come off so we can Lift it as well. So it's lovely light. Uh, letting it run and drip into the picture. Not where the wax is. Like that. Get a tissue. Dab off with the lights there. Discretion, softness, tip of the nose, side of the ch uh, the face. This is not pure white, by the way. Chin. This is not pure white. A light on the neck. You see. Uh, the light there. The light on her dress on the top. Is pure white in places. Like that. She's just kind of, uh, we can use some goulash, don't forget. Lots of goulash. You've got this lovely shape. 
Hani ne diyorum? Ve böyle ver. Çeyet çeyet. Safını yerciz. Yüzü boş. Çeyet kılığı af. Kense. Ama de kişi. Yerlerle. Probably kind of tone that blends into the rest of the face. And it's not too harsh, we don't want it too harsh. Do we? No. Um, get that lovely shadow, take off this. It's nice. Something dark makes something else look lighter. You can see? Do that. You can take that off a bit. And if you wanted to go into it with anything darker, if you put a bit more sepia, you can use it up. Um, just a little bit of ink with your sepia, okay? And um, we just kind of do that and things. And we do the same thing and soften it with a brush. You can go dark and dark and see, and this will give you another, another layer. So the eyes, especially, lovely dark eyes, shadows. You see things like that. Soften them. That's the beauty of it, now because it's um watercolour so you can take it off so I made a muscle top of it and you can carry on with this if you wanted to so we've got this lovely shadow at the side of it and then blend that in right. into the cheekbone Soften. You can't take the ink off. You can take the colour off though, so we don't want to do that. <laughs> Into the side of the nose. So on and so far, do exactly what you did before, just to make a darker tone. And this is what the ink does for you, because it's already there underneath. So you're just softening it, or reinforcing it, as you like. Okay, and then when you get your goulash bit, um, you can use this. Now you have to use it neat. And dry me enough because she's got this lovely white top, so we need to make this top white. Like that. Uh, and the folds, things like the folds, need to be pure white, you see. Don't mix it with the pear, that's a good brown. Um, I've got the pupils are okay, the white spot on the nose is okay, uh, the light on the lips okay, um, these creases, these little shapes, the folds here, which I've gone over, tried not to, but I did. Uh, the shapes, that wax is doing all that there, uh, this is should be white, I always bring it back. Because we can use um, white pigment there. So you 
enough to use it neat. Okay. Uh, walls. And here. Got a really nice area there. It should be light and I've lost it. And that disappears. See? It's just about the highlights really. You could do this with pastel as well. You wanted to. And then we'll stop. You can also do too much, actually. So you've got this really nice highlight. <laughs> He's really uh, hitting this front of the dress. Got the white there, so let's see a bit more. Okay, if you want to lighten the background, you can do it. Just go in the bonnet and a bit of tissue. Uh, so the bonnet stands out a bit more, can you see? The beauty of um, rocking foot, it takes quite a bit of roughness, yeah, you can do a bit of rubbing out, rubbing off, uh, to give you tonal values, and then we can go back into that, if you wanted to, I'll just leave it to where she is, anyway, I'm going to pack it in, because it's five past two, and uh, we're going a good hour, and um, love it, yeah. Thank you for watching. I might do a little bit more, but I don't think I will because I usually just leave them. Um, have a go. I do like to do an ink. Um, and glazing with sepia gives you that old and uh, a photograph look, doesn't it? That's what it looks like a Renaissance kind of image. You know? I mean, we are just copying, but uh, you can do this with anything. Yeah, family members, if you have to sit there for an hour, good luck with that. <laughs> Take the tip. Something like that. Go a bit mad with the wax as well. Okay, thank you. I like the softness to that. I'm gonna, that's where I'm, I'm going to leave it. It's got some lovely shapes going on, so um, that'll do for me. And I'll see you on uh, over today, Tuesday. Um, I'm working tomorrow, so I won't be doing any tomorrow. And then Thursday, I'm free. I'm going for my haircut. It's also a wedding anniversary tomorrow. 37 years. <sighs> 36 years, I think. I think. Anyway, a wedding anniversary. And it's my son's birthday, so, but he's in Croatia at the moment, so we'll see him on Friday. Anyway, I'll see you on Thursday. We'll probably do one, uh, I don't know, Friday morning. Depends what happens. Because my son's coming back on Thursday, so we might be going up all day. Anyway, Thursday is the next one, so that would be class um, three which is watercolour. Okay, see you Thursday. Thanks for watching and have a good couple of days. Thank you. Bye.